you are going to get soul lifting messages, faith based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. There is a name of God that will support your assignment in life. Make sure you find it before that journey starts. You are a man of God. You must know the God who restores. You must know the God who can make men. You are a leader. If all you know is just the God that saves, congratulations, but you will fall short of your assignment. Life will ask you, who sent you? The names of God. The nation of Israel took time to study the names of God. As they sojourned from Egypt to the wilderness, every time they found the name of God, they would capture it. And they would give instructions and say, teach your children and your children's children. When they asked, why are we doing this? Tell them, once upon a time, God showed up in a certain way. We captured that experience. Any day you need him to show up like that again, call that name. That something happened in 2007. I would have died, but I called upon his name. Now that attack is coming again. That name is still there. The name of the Lord is a strong tower that the righteous can run. It's not just what I call. I can enter the name and I am saved. We know God when we know his names. There are names that God is called, oh, brothers and sisters. There, there are dimensions of his power invested in his names. Hmm. When you call him faithful, he does something to you. When you call him mighty God, he does something to you. When you call him El Shaddai, he does something to you. We make miracle walk, promise keep, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We call you, say, the miracle walker. It's no longer a song. You are calling him to your life. Way maker, miracle walker. Light in the darkness. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Of whom shall I fear? I will lift up my eyes to the hills, the psalmist said. From whence cometh my help? He says, my help. I don't know where yours comes from. But my help, even with the pandemic, my help comes from the Lord, not the landlord. The Lord who makes men, who makes heaven, who makes earth, who makes men. I tell you, I, I just sense a strong anointing just, just sweeping through this place. Can you pray in the spirit in one minute? I just sense that there's faith rising. Someone is shaking away every nonsense that the devil has spoken to you. Are you praying? Lift your voice and pray. This is a word conference in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Listen. You see, some of our mothers and our fathers... They didn't have the opportunity to go to school and to be intellectually enlightened as we are, but they knew something about God. 
Mama will get down on her knees and she may speak whether it's Yoruba or Igbo and call a name that she called before you were born. They vowed to her and they said, they said nobody gives birth in this family. And while she was fasting and praying, God came to her and gave her a name. He said, any day you are in trouble, call this name. Listen, your assignment is to use your life and give God a name that those coming towards you will study. He is not just supposed to stop as the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It, the, the revelation of God to us, at the end of my life, I should be able to say I have seen God in this way. And the generations coming, study this name. Study this name. Promise keeper, my light in the darkness. That is who you are. Listen, when you are in an uncomfortable situation, don't just cry and shout and say, God, oh, help me. That's an emotional prayer with no power. There is the name of God that is responsible. If someone is sick and dying, you don't need Jireh. No, you need Rafa. There is a name. Rafa, reveal yourself to me. It says, I will call upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord who is worthy to be praised. By doing that, I shall be saved from my enemies. Call upon the name of the Lord. In one minute, you are going to call upon the name that you know so far. Some of you, there are names you have not called in a long time. That's why some doors have refused to open. Lift your voice in one minute. Whether you will say it in English, you say it in your local dialect. Call that name again. The name you call him in your secret place. The name you call him before gates that refuse to open. The name you call him when it looks like your destiny is closing. Mighty God. Lift your voice and pray. You are the covenant keeping God. You are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. One more time, lift your voice, lift your hands. You are, you are the covenant keeping God. Yahweh, Yahweh, the covenant keeping God. Hallelujah. Please be seated. I tell you, there's faith in this place. The third platform, very quickly. The third platform that helps the saints to know God. Is Jesus the Christ himself. Scripture revealing his character and his methods. His names revealing his dimensions. And here Jesus shows up as the express image of that invisible God. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 15. The Bible calls Jesus the image of the invisible God. All creation, this God that you've believed and you've had all kinds of opinions about. Now, someone has come in the flesh to personify and embody this invisible God. And he calls him the firstborn of every creation. Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1 to 3. 
Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, God who in sundry times and in diverse manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in this last day spoken to us by his son, whom he has appointed to be heir of all things, by whom he made the world. Verse 3, the Bible says, who being the brightness of his glory, uh -huh, and the express image of his person. So Jesus came as a revelation of God. Jesus came as a correction of our opinions about God. He came so that we can now have a standard to compare. We look at Jesus and compare with what we have known and heard about God. And everything that we have known that is not in Jesus Christ, it becomes our manual for editing our understanding. Until Jesus showed up, there were many things that were credited to God that God had no business with. It was the limitation of those who were mandated to interpret him at that time. Until Jesus came, all that they knew about God was a fierce deity who would burn with fire and brimstone over everyone and Jesus came as the expression of God. He revealed the love of God. He came to personify the scripture that said, I have loved you with an everlasting love and I have drawn you with my loving kindness. When he walked upon the earth, he demonstrated a dimension of love and ability and power that dumbfounded the scribes and the Pharisees who had learned him theologically. They could not reconcile what they had read for years. Now with this man, they were angry and said, this can't be God. God does not behave like this. God cannot love that far to finish a crusade now and sit down with only one woman. Talking with her with the same passion. No, the God we know is only interested in a crowd of people. I'm not sure he has that time to sit with just one person. And Jesus came as a correction of our mindset and our perception about God. So you want to know God, look at Jesus. The image, God personified. Are we blessed? 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. 1 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 16. And without controversy, great is what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. What is that? God was made manifest in the flesh. He was justified in the spirit. He was seen of angels. He preached unto Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up to glory. God becoming a man in the person Jesus. Now listen please. God is not a man. Please say that. God is not a man. God only became a man. If you say God is a man, it means it's wrong to worship him. Because you don't worship the creature. God is not a man. God is God. He became a man to help men. Are we together now? Yes. Because there is a law in this territory that until you have a material body, you are illegitimate in this realm. So he had to wear a body. The word became flesh so that it can dwell among men. Then we beheld his glory, even as of the begotten, full of grace and truth. God is not a man. He became a man. Are we together now? And his becoming a man is powerful because he went back to heaven with his body that is the guarantee that he's coming back if he went without his body we will not trust his returning because where will he get a body from again are you seeing now we believe he's coming because he went back with his body so he will still honor the law of territory when he's returning because he has the body he will use to return with now he does not need a virgin to give him a body again he's seated as the man jesus we know. So anytime you say he's coming back, it's not just because people said he's coming back. He has fulfilled the law that allows his entrance here again. Today he's seated on the throne with his body, the man, Jesus. But he is God. You're not a man, no. You're not a man. 
You're the God who opens doors no man can shut. He's not a man who You're the God of everything, no one like you. That is God for you. His personal name was given to Moses called Jehovah. It's the Hebrew word Y-H-W-H. yad he wah It was his personal name. Do you know what that name meant? The one who brings into existence. That's it. The one who brings into existence. The one who is responsible for manifesting anything. So when he says, I am that I am. It was such a sacred name. The Jews did not even mention it. The names of God. Is someone blessed? That you can go and study the names of God. And match it to the challenges that you have in your life. Now Jesus came. You see why the name of Jesus is powerful? Because he came to embody everything that God was. So whether it is Rapha, you say Jesus, you are right. Whether it's Jaira, you say Jesus, you are right. Whether it's seeking you, you say Jesus, you are right. Someone shout Jesus. Jesus. Shout that name. Say Jesus. Jesus. In ancient times, you had to qualify the need. Jehovah Jaira. Jehovah Rapha. And Jesus was given a name. You now see what happened in heaven. All those names as a reward were given to him. An office. The Bible says that name was given, exalted above every other name. That at the mention of that name, when you invoke that office. Hmm. Jesus, the revelation, the complete revelation of God. Next time... You see, it's because we don't have this knowledge. So when you say Jesus to a situation, your ignorance is glaring in the realm of the spirit. And so there is no power of performance. But now you go back after this conference and shout Jesus. You know what you are saying. Jesus means Rafa plus Jaira plus Sikenu plus every other thing. You're the God of everything. Someone shout Jesus. Jesus. Over your health, shout Jesus. Jesus. Over the pandemic, shout Jesus. Jesus. Over that situation that has mocked God in your life, shout Jesus. Jesus. Jesus the embodiment, perfect theology, God made manifest. Can you spare me five more minutes? The last dimension or platform, the last platform for knowing God, this is very personal. It's called your experience. Hmm. There is a dimension of God that only your experience can teach you. Job 42 and verse 5. Please read it if you're a Christian. One to read. But now my eyes, you can doubt what you hear, but you cannot doubt what you see. I've heard of you. They've said a lot of things, but now my experience, my experience has revealed a dimension of you. First John chapter one and verse one. The epistle of John, 1 John chapter 1. It says, that which was from the beginning, which we have, help me, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and then now our hands have handled. Everybody say experience. When God wants to use you to reveal a dimension of him, it is very usual with God that somewhere in your experience there will be an event that will practically bring you to a point where you will need that dimension of him yourself 
And when you are now delivered from that dimension, it strengthens your conviction. You ask almost anybody that truly works in the healing anointing, they will tell you a time came in their life. There was a report. There was a situation. They were left face to face with their sermons. It was a defense. And when God brought them through it, they said, now I know God heals. I know from scripture. I know from his name. I saw Jesus healed, but my life now is a testimony. When people speak from the standpoint of their experiences, it comes with a conviction that is compelling. Knowing a theoretical God is very risky. You must trust God for an experience with God. Do you have an experience with God that gives you the confidence that you have? Your experience is not the ultimate basis of your knowledge of God, but it is a powerful support system. I know whom I have believed. I am persuaded. When Daniel was at the lion's den, when he came out of that den, I can tell you that his conviction, his persuasion, everything changed. Your pastor, if you would ask him, he would tell you that his sojourn in this life so far, he's experienced so many things and has required the hand of God, the good hand of God upon his life at several instances. Do you know that most hymns, you know why hymns are powerful? Because most of them were not those special numbers. Many of them were experiences of people. They saw the deliverance of God. They saw several things. So even though the people are long gone, the hymns have refused to die. Your experience. There are people through this pandemic. They've gone through things financially, health-wise. They've survived what people said could not be, they could not survive. And so when they pray, they don't pray like 2019 again or 2018. When they say, my father, my healer, it's not just our father like a religious prayer. They know what they are saying. Hallelujah. That he showed up for you in a way showed up for your children showed up for your family your company said look just consider yourself gone and you went to him and said lord you are the restorer and after two weeks they called you like they've never done in the history of that company the next time you are reading i will restore the years you will believe it because you have an experience that can relate with that do you know why you know that amala is delicious The things you saw, the things you had from your mother, somewhere along the line, life gave an opportunity for your hands to handle it. Now you believe. Now you believe. Are we together? It is risky to just see and hear. You must trust God to bring you to a point where you experience it. There are things I know today I will die believing because my life is a testament of it. The knowledge of the holy. Scripture revealing God and helping us know him. The names of God capturing different dimensions of him that educate us and teach us who God really is. Then Jesus, the embodiment of of God in the flesh and then your experience follow this pathway and you become a dangerous human being positively speaking on earth nothing will move you you will stand unperturbed by the vicissitudes of life this is what this generation needs more than any other thing conviction that you can stand and say I know God and 20 years later, you are still saying, I said the same thing. I'm still saying the same thing. Our vacillations are proof that we know a theoretical God. And God is calling us in this conference. I'm lending my voice with all other speakers who have been communicating dimensions of the kingdom. To call us back to the place of certainty. The knowledge of God. Please, if you are in ministry, hear this. The days that are coming will require more than the ability to speak well. 
it will require more than the ability to just manage and, and administrate properly. You will have to stand upon the platform of conviction because life is coming to test conviction. The Bible says if you fall in the day of battle, it is proof that your strength is small. Is someone ready to pray? Do you like prayer? Please rise up on your feet. I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now my eyes have seen you. I commend you to God and then to the word of his grace. It is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance. Hallelujah. Prayer point number one. You are going to cry to the Lord God of heaven that he would reveal himself in a personal way and in a definite way to you. It's, he said, call on to me and I will answer. I will show you. I will show you. It doesn't have to be a supernatural encounter but it must be an encounter that creates persuasion and conviction. Are you ready to pray? Please lift your voice in one minute and pray. Your destiny will require this sermon. The days ahead will require the knowledge of this sermon. I commend you to God. I commend you to God that scripture reveals. I commend you to God revealed through his name. I commend you to God revealed through the person Jesus. I commend you to God revealed through your experiences shalabarusa zia katebaradosia entela ko shabrandos kadebrahasada balakosiata shalabranda katosa zia tabaladabash don't be tired this is a word conference you are investing in prayer you are sowing in the spirit are there people of prayer here We we'll give ourselves to the ministry of the word and of prayer. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The next prayer point. He said, but I know whom I have believed and I am persuaded. You're going to cry to the Lord, create conviction. I'm tired of believing this today and doubting what I believe tomorrow. I'm tired of allowing fear. I watch a news and in five minutes I'm afraid. There's something about God that must give me stability. Listen, please look up. I'm still establishing the second prayer point. Did you know? that because of the pandemic and all that has happened around all through 2020 you know there are people today people have committed suicide by themselves there are people today who have had all kinds of sicknesses that are directly fear related are we together i'm not even talking of corona no not at all high blood pressure how will my life be? How will I feed five children? How will I feed? I, I, I mean, it, will I, I, I? Do I know what tomorrow brings? You find rest when you know God. So you are going to pray, Lord, take away fear from my life by giving me convictions, convictions about God, the integrity of His person. Lift your voice and pray. Strengthen my faith. Grant me conviction. I reject fear fear of the future lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray
hallelujah praise the lord now you're going to pray you're going to call every month of 2021 call it by name and send words of faith are we together from january february please don't be quiet these are times when you should not be quiet you should not be quiet call the months and declare bless them with the name of the lord january i place the name of the lord upon you february my god goes before me march someone is praying i declare tragedy free in the name of jesus failure free in the name of jesus full of wisdom full of grace full of exploits triumph victory by the spirit someone is speaking over his year recreate your year prophesy those following online go ahead and pray Go ahead and declare by the spirit dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaskade bashkana kata branda kate kapos. Kate branda kata pakotos koto pray kate kene kata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.